Hello, and welcome back to another Acid Pro Next tutorial. So, this particular episode, if you're interested in uh, listening, is going to deal with volume changes and panning. So, I would highly recommend, if you do not have at this current moment, a pair of headphones, that you pause the video and get those. Otherwise, I would listen to this on a set of speakers that can differentiate right and left channels, preferably left, right, and front and back. So if you can, go ahead and plug those in now. If you can't, then just listen along the best you can. So I put together this little track. It runs for one minute. It seemed like a good introduction without being too involved. It's got a droning sound, some drums, uh, some other stuff, nothing complicated. Percussion, synth, and drones with a kick and some more drums. It uh, I double layered the drums on it just so you could get some effect. And more than anything, I just liked the way that they fit together. Didn't spend too much time on this. It's not a masterpiece. So what we're going to deal with today is we're going to deal with fading in and out volume and fading in and out left and right uh, panning. So in order to access those, we need to select the track that we're working with. So if we select this one, we'll be working with this particular track and you right click on it and it brings up some things you can do with the track. And we want to insert an envelope. So we want to insert volume and it adds this bluish bar and we're going to actually insert that on all of them so we can control them all independently. of each other. Even though we may not utilize every one of these, it will give us the ability to grab them as we go. And as long as all your stuff is in order, right off the bat, you're not having to go back. So we're, first we're going to deal with volume. So volume is a great way to control how your inserted loops and tracks interact with your song. So now we've got volume on everything. So here's what we want to do. At about the 56 minute mark, Oh, I'll tell you what, let's jump up one more. 54. Can't get a happy medium at 55, but that's okay. We're going to right click and add a point all across the board. Actually, we only need to do this on the tracks that are present, but we're adding a point because this is going to be a hard reference where the volume is midline at this point. So the reason we're adding these in every single one of these is because I want the volume to be normalized at this point. So regardless of what I do, it is going to be where it is. All right. So now that we've added a point, we've normalized the volume at 54 seconds to be at zero dB. So no gain, no loss. It's exactly as loud as the rest of the track was. Now here's where we only need to touch the ones that actually are active at that particular point. And we're going to add a point at the end of the song at each one of those. Now I'm going to play this from this point 
so you can hear this particular track right here. And then we're going to edit it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and play it. And like I said, keep in mind, this is not something I put together with a lot of thought. This is something I put together to have a lot of sounds. So let's go ahead and play. <laughs> Okay, so now you got a sense of what we're dealing with. Not complex, actually not even very good. It's just very much noise and it's got a lot of sounds. So what we want to do is we want to incorporate a fade into our song. So we grab these dots at the end and these are only for the active ones and we just drag them down. Because we want our song to be professional and fade out and not just drop off. Because that sounds like trash when your songs just do that. Now I'm doing a pretty sharp drop. You can actually average this out even more if you spend a little more time on it. But I, this, for the sake of the tutorial, we're just gonna do a fade. Now we're gonna play it from the same point so you can see what it does and how much better this nonsense actually sounds. <laughs> See, now our track fades out like it's actually a recording. Key factor that bothers me when I see produced songs by people who are just producing things at home is their songs just end. There's a time and a place for your songs to do that. You want a dramatic ending, you, you slam it at the end and you end it. You want to fade out like you're actually doing a professional recording, which you typically would want to do. This is how you accomplish that. Now these volume sliders, and the reason we put these normalizes at the end where we put everything at zero dB, the easiest time to do this is when you start. So I always start with the fade out at the end because I can set all of these back to their default position. The last dot sets the last point that it's going to do anything with the volume. So playing with this particular track with nothing in it. So I'm editing this top line. Now, I don't have a point at the front. If I move this, it moves the entire track. But I can do this all day long. And it will, there's nothing playing here, so you can't hear what it does, but it will get softer and louder, obviously. But it will always end up at zero dB to finish out the song. And my reference, where I start editing the track, is going to start at zero dB. So I have a reference point to start with. I have variations that I can do. And then I have a point where everything goes back to exactly flat default, and then I can finish it however I want. So this is my reference point. This is where I stop editing everything. Everything here is going to be 100% where it should be right out of the bat. So how the track starts, how everything should normalize, 0 dB, no editing whatsoever at this point. Everything before and after this point can be changed and edited. But right here, I've got a set point that my track will always go back to and this is this is my logic behind this and this is why I do this and I do it on every song because I want to be able to edit through the song and I want everything to be at a point where it's averaged and normalized so I can finish it out with some continuity and not have any kind of odd things going on now if you want something to drag on they don't even have to match I could cut this out faster I could 
make this louder. And then drop it down a little more. And then I could even spike it up a little bit right there. I could cut this way down and then put a spike here to normalize it. And then I could spike it up just a little bit right there. Now, this is just going to add just a little bit of flavor to it, but not a lot because everything is kind of there. But having these sound changes in volume is going to, and it depends on what you're working with, honestly. But if you want to fade out a song with a guitar and you want the guitar to stay strong to the end, you could fade out everything else and then you can fiddle with the volume on the guitar all you want. So let's play this so we can see what we're, we're going to do it closer to the point here where it edits because we've already heard what this sounds like. You know what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, so as it went down, you could hear everything start to fade out. You could hear this come in a little stronger and then fade out. And you could hear this bump back up a little bit. And it's hard to do without muting everything. And I'm not going to do that because it's going to take too long to play each individual track for you and show you. But realize that higher is more volume, lower is less volume. So this dropped out fast and then returned a little bit. This just faded down easy. This came in strong and then faded out a little slower. Adding a little bit of variation to how things fade out can make a particular track come out and stand out a little bit more. So let's say in here, we wanna make some changes. Anytime you make changes with a particular bar or track or whatnot, at a point before you start, at a point when you're going to be done. Now I'm adding these within the unit, but you could actually add them here and here and then here and here because this will give you an entry point. So if I want to, I'll show you when I get this one done. Hold on. Let me, let me finish what I'm doing. I don't want to get confused. All right. So now I've got these here and what I can do is I can actually like put something in there and then bend these down in the middle. Pull these down a little bit. Actually, I grabbed the whole damn thing. There we go. You don't want to grab the bar, you want to grab the dot. And you can always check it and make sure it's back at zero dB, minus zero dB. So then we add another dot here, add point, and I'm right clicking and adding a point. And I'm not trying for consistency. If I was, I would actually be making sure they were all negative 7.7, .7, but negative seven to eight is fine for my purposes here. So now we've got this one right here that's a little different. So what I wanna do, I wanna put some more points in here. And if you scroll your mouse wheel, it'll skew how many edits you can do because every one of these could be an edit. We're not gonna do that many, but it can be. And you could take it way down. But we got these. So now, this track's coming in, it's getting ready to come in. I want, I want it to come in really low. And then I want it to go up, up, down a little bit, it kind of fade out. Now I didn't play this part of the track for you because it, it's just noise. It really is. But we got everything coming down a little bit in volume except this one part that we want to highlight a little more. So let's let's go into this and I'm just going to play this little bar right here. Okay. So you can hear the rest of them kind of fade out of the way and then this really high pitched one which I picked the really poor one to do it on kind of jumps out at you a little bit. This highlights this track. I do this a lot with guitar solos. I kind of dip the drum and I dip the, or well, any kind of solo actually, I dip the drum and I dip the, the, the background noise and the music and whatever else and the, like the secondary instruments. And then I, I kind of make a rough hump through the middle of the solo 
per se of the instrument I want to I want to bring out and I kind of give that one a rise so it comes in it draws your attention to it and then it gradually starts to average out to where the other ones are I don't do them drop down this much but um, this particular one was a bad example it's solo because it's a very high-pitched little noise but if I was doing like a bar I would actually drag this up a little bit and then I would take it back to 0 dB Maybe I might make it a little softer at the beginning if it warranted doing that, like in this particular case. But it brings things out a little bit more when you actually give some variation in volume. The things you want people to pay attention to should be louder than the things that you don't want them to pay attention to. So your, your drum beat, your whatnot, your, your other stuff. If you want your drums to really kick for one particular part and the rhythm can just be rhythm, you can, you can decrease the volume on the rhythm just a little bit and increase that kick just a little bit more. Give it a little bit more push. And that will give some dramatic effect to your music. Now, the first part, you can do all kinds of crazy things to, uh, to these things, honestly, as you go. We can add points. I'm just going to add points, too. And here's the danger. If I don't add a point here and I do something with this, I'm editing the whole line. So if I if I have this playing here as well, and I want to edit it here, I need to block that off so that I'm not editing this part as well. Because if I change this, I'm changing everything all the way to the first dot and the first dot because I'm not referencing a point. So... I always add in some points so that you've got you got some things to work with. All right, so that is volume. So now we're going to work with our uh, panning. So we want to do some panning, and I'm going to do panning more on this first track than anything. So now we're going to insert. envelope pan and we're going to add a point at the beginning and we're going to add some random points through here at various intervals just like that and again we want to finalize our point because we want it to be in the middle or a, a controlled point when we're done. It doesn't have to end up in the middle. It, it doesn't have to end up what would be center. However, we do want a point where it ends that we can control. And then if I don't intend to leave it at center, I always do add a point to center right there afterwards. So now we've got this. I did not mean to do that. We're going to grab that point. We're going to move it up. We're going to move it down. And it gets kind of complicated when you're trying to uh, work with some of these sometimes. Sometimes you got to move the other bars out of the way if you can't hit that point right. And I am not hitting my point. So we'll get that volume out of the way. There we go. There we go. And for the sake of this, I'm going to end it not at center. So I'm going to end it right there. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, solo this one. So this is all we're going to listen to. Now, I'm going to slow it down. 60 beats per minute so you can follow where it's going. Now I want you to kind of listen, and I don't know how well this is going to illustrate this, but let's, uh, let's give it a play and we'll see. It should be heading towards one side more than the other. The first transition is really hard to detect. Now we should go into the other side.
hopefully you can hear that and detect it. But this will send it from one side of your headphones to the other. And now we're left panned all the way out. And now we're back to center. Okay. All right, so let's set it back to 120 beats per minute. Now what you can use this for, and this is an interesting trick, I did an orchestral performance with using this program. And what I did was I actually made a map of where my instruments were sitting. And I visualized in my head where I would be sitting listening to this in an audience. To add realism to the track, since they were all generated instruments of various types or recorded instruments that I did, but to add it, especially with something like an orchestral piece, like a, a instrumental or a, a soundtrack, you can actually set a pan at a level all the way across. And as long as you keep it consistent, it's going to sound like, if you're listening to it on headphones, that the horns are a little bit off to the left and the strings are a little bit off to the right. And if you, if you can visualize your map and you can visualize sitting in an audience listening to a song, and you can even do this with, with music, like rock music too, or whatever you want. If you, if you do a two guitar, bass, singer type arrangement, the singer can be center. You can have your lead guitar panned to the left slightly and your rhythm guitar panned to the right slightly. And you can have your drum just a little bit off center to add, give it a little bit of edge. You just basically built a stage out of your song. So you took your, your generated music your, your, your loops, your recorded stuff that you threw together and you gave it position. You gave it a visual representation. If you close your eyes, you can picture, it sounds like that guy's a little bit over to the side. It sounds like this guy's a little over to this side. It's very hard to pick up and notice, but you do hear the difference. And if you do a big orchestral piece like I did, you actually can make it sound like you've got French horns over on one side and you've got trombones over on the other side and you've got strings across the middle and distributed out in various places. However, if you're doing a combination of pieces, you do have to make sure that all of the tracks and loops and whatever you put in there for that particular piece of equip of, of instrument uses that same location and that's why i actually took graph paper and made a map of where i wanted all of my pieces to be because you'll lose all sense of realism if you don't keep it consistent so that is an introduction to panning volume changes and a little bit of what starts you down the path of track fx now i'm going to play this track one time all the way through so you can hear it in its simplicity just in case you're curious, and then we're going to end the video. But I think you'll get the point. If you have any questions about this, definitely give me a shout out down in the description, down in the comments down below. I'd be happy to answer them. But realistically, this is a very simple but very effective way to add depth and perception and some substance to your track. So here we go. We'll run it out with the song that I put together in two minutes. <laughs>
and that's the track in its entirety. Now, there was one additional point that I wanted to do. I just didn't have the availability of song sounds at right now to uh, put it together. These transitions are really hard, not difficult. They're very sharp and hard. They hit, they like fall over onto each other rather than blend into each other. And the key thing that this allows you to do is I can run these over a little bit and run these down. I can use volume to uh, set pitch levels for these so that the transitions aren't as harsh. And I can run drum patterns through them like roll ups or roll offs to roll into this one and roll out of this one. And you can use the volume and the panning to do that. You can actually put a drum roll in, start it in the left ear, run it to the right ear, and then run the volume up or down. So that was one of the main points that I wanted to make. And that's a practical application for what you're doing. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, like I said, drop them down below. Uh, we're going to go back to our tutorial track and do some more work on that next week, along with some other things. And then we're going to start a new track. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to split pre-made loops into usable pieces. So we're not using the entire bit of it. And we're going to do a little bit of affecting with that. So look forward to that. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.